Today we're going to look at the mnemonic Dr. E. Stout. This is our persuasive techniques. The word stout, when we're describing an object, means strong. And that's what we want our persuasion to be. It could be that we're persuading someone, wanting them to agree with us. It could be that we're arguing our point of view. Or maybe even we're giving advice. Using these persuasive techniques will help you to do that. Okay, so what we're going to try and do now is see if we can remember what each of the letters stands for. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. If you get yourself a pen and paper, see if you can write down Dr. E. Stout. And maybe even see if you can remember some of the, what the words are as well. Okay, are you ready? How did you do? Did you remember some of the letters? Did you remember any of the words that the letters stand for? There are some tricky spellings in there, so don't worry if you didn't quite get those right. The idea is we're just trying to learn these techniques. So Dr. E. Stout, if you look at the picture, she's very official. She's the one that's there to sound like an expert. If you're trying to convince someone to agree with you, you want to sound like you know what you're talking about. These techniques will help you do that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through each technique in turn and make sure we really understand what it is and how we can use it. As we go through each letter, I'd like you to have a try at writing some examples of your own. So to help you with that, why don't you pick a topic now that you might try and persuade someone about? It could be something like the use of mobile phones in school. Maybe you want to argue for or against it. Maybe it could be about wearing uniforms. Again, you could argue for or against this. Pick a topic, use one of the ones I've suggested, or think of something else. Let's have a try at each letter. Okay, here's our first letter, D. What does the D stand for? I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Off you go. The D stands for direct address. Now, the easy way to remember what this is, is you're directly speaking to the person. So we use what we call personal pronouns. Like here, we've got the word we. Other examples would be us, our. Anything that makes it sound like you're having a conversation with the person who's reading your text. This makes it feel a lot more personal and therefore makes them more likely to agree with you. The example we've got here is, we can achieve this together. Why don't you see if you can line, write a line of direct address? So what does the R stand for? See if you can write it down. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Off you go. Did you remember that the R stands for rhetorical question? The difference with this and a normal question is you're not really expecting an answer. You're actually implying, hinting at what you think. The example here is, who doesn't want success? With the topic you've chosen, why don't you try and write a rhetorical question of your own? Remember, it's all about persuading. While you have a try, just pause the video. So what does the letter E stand for? Again, you can have 10 seconds, see if you can write it down. Don't worry too much about the spellings. That gives you a little bit of a hint at the word that's coming up. Did you remember that the E stood for exaggeration? 
Exaggeration means making what you're saying really over the top. We do this to sound more passionate, more emotive, as though what you're saying is so important that it's ridiculous if they don't agree with you. The example we've got here is, I'm starving. I could eat a horse. Okay, using the topic that you've chosen, think you can write a line of exaggeration. Just pause the video while you do. Our next letter is S. What does the S stand for? You've got 10 seconds to try. Off you go. Did you remember that the S stands for statistic? All a statistic is, is a fact using numbers. I'm sure you've probably done them in other subjects such as maths and science. The reason we do this is that by using factual information, by using statistics that back up what you're saying, your argument sounds much more professional and your persuasion sounds much stronger. The example we've got here is 80% of people agreed that this would change their community for the better. Again, using the topic you've chosen, pause the video and see if you can write a statistic of your own. Off you go. Our next letter is T. What does the T stand for? You've got 10 seconds. Off you go. Did you remember that the T stands for triplet? Think of triplets, it's three. And that's all this technique means, using three words or three phrases or three points to really back up what you're saying. Doing this makes it sound much more convincing. The example here is, this is disgraceful, unacceptable and barbaric. Using your topic, pause the video, see if you can write your own triplet. Our next letter is O. What does the O stand for? You have 10 seconds to try and write it down. Off you go. Did you remember that the O stands for opinion? Obviously, if you're persuading or arguing or even if you're giving advice, you're going to be using your own opinion to do this. But what we're talking about is expert opinions. For example, environmentalist Erin Day stated, koalas are likely to become critically endangered. By quoting the opinion of an expert, you're making your persuasion even stronger, even more convincing and believable because someone who really knows what they're talking about agrees with you. Thinking about your own topic, say if you've chosen the for or against argument for mobile phones or uniforms, who would be a good expert? Maybe it'd be an educational minister. Maybe it'd be a head teacher. Pause the video See if you can quote the opinion of an expert for your topic. Next, we've got the letter U. What does the U stand for? 10 seconds, see if you can write it down. Off you go. The U stands for undermine. Did you remember that? It's a little bit of a tricky one, this one. We don't really need to use it when we're persuading or when we're giving advice. This is more for when we're arguing our point of view. What we're doing is saying, yes, I know there's another point of view and that it's this, 
But it's not a very good point of view because actually, if you thought about this, by doing this, we're getting them on side, getting our reader to agree even more because they realise that we've thought about both sides of the argument. So we might use phrases like, although I agree, and then we'd explain what we agree with, I must point out, and then we'd undermine it with why that isn't a very strong argument. Okay, pause the video, think about your own topic. What might someone argue against what you're saying? See if you can write a statement that undermines it. Now we've got our final letter, T. What does the T stand for? 10 seconds, off you go. T stands for tone. Did you remember? Tone is really important. What do you want your reader to go away feeling? How do you feel about the topic that you're persuading or arguing about? If we look back at some of the earlier examples, our exaggeration almost sounds quite desperate, whereas our triplet almost sounds quite angry. What about this example for tone? We all know how much difference that will make. It's almost a little bit sarcastic, isn't it? The words that we choose, the phrases that we use, those get across the tone. How the reader hears our words. Okay, the last time to have a go. Think about your topic, think about how you feel about it, and see if you can write a sentence that really gets across a tone, a mood. Pause the video. Have a try. So those are our persuasive techniques. Dr. E. Stout, your friend that's there to help you make your argument, your persuasion, your advice sound convincing, sound professional and believable. Try to remember the mnemonic D-R-E-S-T-O-U-T. -E then it's about trying to remember what the letters stand for direct address, rhetorical question, exaggeration, statistic, triplet, opinion, undermine, tone. It's a lot to remember, but the more you practice, the easier that becomes. And the more confident you'll become with how to use these techniques in your writing. So that's all for today. Well done, everyone.